Hello, welcome to Red Talks. Um, this video is going to be a little different than my usual content. Um, it was inspired by, or, well, encouraged by Zeitgeist Eater for me to make this video. And I thought, well, sure, I'll make a video. And um, if you don't know who Zeitgeist Eater, he is um, one of the guys in charge of the MGTOW mirror. Him and MGTOW Monger have been the... Uh, Two that have basically put that whole MGTOW Mirror project together. And if you don't know about it, go support MGTOW Monger and Zeitgeist Eater and check out the MGTOW Mirror project. It's a um, pretty cool thing what they're doing to try and save MGTOW content from censorship. <clears throat> anyway, um, what I want to talk about today is sort of a, a red pill from an industrial perspective. Um, you know, normally red pill content has a lot to do with relationships, personal life, women, I don't know, whatever the hell you want to talk about. But, uh, I want to talk about some experience I have working in the, uh, without giving too much information away about my personal background. And, um, I guess I'll just say I have experience working in the medical industry and namely medical devices, um, is one, uh, piece of my experience I will talk about. Uh, basically, I want to shed light on some shitty things that happen in the medical device industry. Um, so basically, just to get started, there are human devices and there are veterinary devices for used in animal medicine. Um, I have experience in both. Um, sometimes you will have a device that is the same device for both markets. Um, take a, a simple, uh, a simple bandage, you know, a wrap, um, a gauze or something like that. Um, you're going to dress a wound for a human the exact same way you're going to dress a wound for an animal, you know, or a syringe. A uh, syringe is a really good example. Um, you need to inject a vaccine into a, a new puppy. Um, or a new baby. It doesn't matter. You're going to use the same syringe. These, um, I'll, I'll just keep going with the syringe um, example. It's pretty easy to use. Um, a syringe is a very simple device. Um, it's very cheap. You know, it's just a, a piece of plastic, um, a rubber stopper, and a needle point, and maybe a cap that goes over the needle. And then you got packaging and labeling and things like that. Very cheap to make. Um, a manufacturer can make them for pennies, basically. Um, and then they will sell this medical device to a um, human distributor or a veterinary distributor, and it'll be marked up somewhat. Maybe they'll sell this, you know, let's just say it's a $1 uh, syringe that was uh, how much it cost to make was $1, and they'll sell it to a distributor for, I don't know, 5 bucks, something like that. And then this distributor will sell that same syringe to the animal market for, uh, I don't know, 7 or $8. And they'll sell that same syringe to the human market for $15. Um, the animal market, the veterinary market, um, rather, is basically um, all paid for up front. There are a few insurance programs out there for veterinary, but it's not huge like it is uh, human. So the cost for veterinary devices are much lower. Um, <clears throat> so, and that's pretty much where it ends with the veterinary line uh, it's of cost. You know, it's, it, you know, goes down the line and it stops there and it's pretty affordable. But for the human side, it keeps going and it gets worse. So this distributor um, just sold this, you know, $1 syringe that they bought for $5 to a human medical doctor um, and now they get to the human medical doctor, they pay, I don't know, let's say they pay $25 for the syringe. And then the human doctor will sell it to the patient. You know, they'll charge the patient for, you know, using it on them and they'll charge the patient a hundred dollars for that syringe. I'm not kidding. It's a huge, crazy markup like that. And then the human patient wants to claim medical insurance to cover this and so the insurance will actually get billed a little differently sometimes uh, it depends on the pr on the um, type of insurance there's different insurance programs out there 
and they might get billed even more. So a $1 syringe can just keep going on and on and on down the line and get marked up to you know over a hundred dollars and that's a, um, a very common example of how medical devices just get marked up like crazy for no reason other than um, it's expensive because it is you know people know that humans value their health um, especially in America they can get away with it they'll mark up these devices and inflate them and exploit the system and abuse the system um, and they know that insurance companies pay out of these giant pools of money and they can afford it. So <clears throat> that's another reason why it gets um, abused. But that's just, and that's a very, very simple example, a syringe. You know, there's other devices out there that get even crazier. There might be, I don't know, some uh, device that still costs pennies to make, you know, maybe a dollar to make. And by the time it reaches the patient or, you know, the insurance, you're talking about $1,000. Um, it gets really crazy out there. Um, the other side of the coin, um, where I have some experience is dealing with the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration. Um, the Food and Drug Administration regulates everything related to medical, basically. Um, they oversee medical devices, they oversee how hospitals operate, they oversee, um, basically how medical devices are made, they ensure that medical devices are built to a certain standard. Um, <clears throat> some of these regulations, though, have become so expensive and so difficult to uh, fall under that it is actually hinder hindering the progress of newer, um, innovative, smaller companies that are trying to release some sort of new device on the market. Um, if you want to bring a new device to market, you're basically looking at about a minimum of 10 years in the FDA approval process and probably about $10 million dollars. Uh, minimum. So humans are actually dying because we can't get new devices brought to the market that could possibly, you know, cure something or help improve the quality of life. Um, the process is just too um, uh, expensive. It's too time consuming. It's too difficult. Um, and it should be difficult to some degree, but it's difficult in a way that it's sort of rigged. And that's this is my next point that has to do with this. Basically, um, the bigger companies can afford to go through this. You have huge companies like Johnson & Johnson, um, 3M. Um, there's other big names out there. Um, Dow Chemical, um, those types of companies have their hand in the medical device market as well. They can afford this, no problem, and so they can get through and just keep producing, you know, cheap, basic medical devices at low cost and push them out to the market, and they'll push out smaller uh, competition that way as well. Um, many of these medical devices are under certain classifications that are designed to either support life, so, um, such as a pacemaker. You know, a pacemaker is actually something that supports your life. You cannot live without it. And other div um, classifications fall under improve quality of life. Um, something like a, um, you know, an IV fluid bag or, or, a, or a syringe, you know, that, or a catheter or something that's, you know, helping improve your life or, or, or um, help you get through a surgery or recover from a surgery. Um, many of these devices are not in line with those classifications um, and the FDA stipulates that you know these devices are supposed to be classified as such and not be made for you know just profit or you know not serve an intended purpose under those classifications but many devices are there are lots of devices that are basically pointless and they have the sole purpose of generating a profit for the um, either the medical care provider or the medical device manufacturer um, and a lot of the doctors that do offer these products that are basically pointless um, receive kickbacks by selling them to the patient, basically just like you would sell you know, a, a car to somebody. Uh, it really, they are selling it to them. It's not something they need. It's something that is sold to them uh, as an upgrade or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and when it comes to the FDA itself, the FDA is supposed to be a neutral player 
when it comes to the decision-making process for approving medical devices, as well as the overall um, monitoring of the manufacturing processes that go on with making a medical device. Um, and this is the scariest thing, uh, basically, here is the FDA is actually comprised of board members who are employees or high um, ranking you know CEOs of actual medical device companies so you'll have a you know the vice president of Johnson and Johnson um, I don't know if if the vice president does but this is an example but you can have you know the vice president of Johnson and Johnson sitting on the FDA review board so you will literally have um, the vice president of Johnson and Johnson reviewing your medical device if you want to bring it to the market and they will be the ones to approve it or not so um, it's a pretty dirty system um, you know when you have a, a representative from a multi-billion dollar competitor um, running you through the gamut uh, when it comes through trying to get a medical device brought to the market um, and they don't like devices that actually improve certain situations because then it takes away you know the ability for them to keep keep you sick you know that a lot of the medical medical uh, healthcare industry is about keeping you sick they don't want to cure you they don't want you to um, actually um, fully recover from something they want to keep you sick keep you in recovery as long as possible so they can keep selling you medical products uh, medical devices um, whereas if you had some magic pill or magic you know medical device it was going to cure something or, or bring you to full recovery um, for some ailment that you have. Um, they won't like that. Um, they will try to keep it um, uh, out of the market. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. Just want to, you know, talk about um, a shitty situation that uh, affects the American healthcare market, the um, American medical device market. Um, I'm not sure how things happen in other countries, but. Um, I do have a little bit of experience in getting medical devices into other markets, like in Europe and things like that, but um, not as much as American. I don't know if it's still on right now, but just recently there was a really cool documentary special on Netflix called The Bleeding Edge. Um, it's all about uh, like failed medical devices and, and how the FDA actually approved um, some bad devices and how it's kind of a flawed system it has a lot to do with what basically I just talked about in this video so if it's still available on Netflix definitely check it out and I highly recommend it and if it's not on Netflix maybe you can I don't know find it some other place and watch it some other way so that's pretty much it for this video um, you know you you hear a lot of people talk about how great the American um, healthcare system is um, other other things are you know so great when it comes to America, but a lot of people just don't know. A lot of people don't know what happens behind the scenes. Um, people just don't know who's pulling the strings. Um, people think everything is great until you actually realize, you know, once you got your foot in the door somewhere, you, you see behind the curtain um, and realize how shitty it is. Um, so, yep, just um, trying to shed some light on some truths about this. And um, that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, um, I will not answer any specific questions about my background i'm going to pretty much leave it to what i said in this video um for my own privacy sake but um anything else i'd be happy to answer but thank you for watching see you in the next video